welcome to the programmable light responding circuit. So, we're going to do something very similar to the last tutorial where we used a button to turn a bunch of LEDs on and off. This time we're going to use something a little more sophisticated. We're going to use an LDR, a light dependent resistor. We're going to use him as a sensor of a light intensity, which means that since we're in a program, and since we're going to be using analog ports, we're going to have a precise value for the light. It's going to be somewhere between 1 and 1,024. And we're going to do this using something called a voltage divider. I'll get to it in a second. But first, let's just construct the circuit. So, as usual, we'll put in the power rails. We're going to go for G and D on the far side. And the 5 volts on the near side. Just because we usually do it, we're going to put in two LEDs, and we can use the usual. Um, I think so far we've been using 6, 8, 10, and 12 for the LEDs. So we can maybe just use 6 and 8. And two cables to go there. So time for the voltage divider. Now, what you're going to do is we're going to make a circuit that goes from the plus to the minus through a large resistor and an LED. So we're going to go LED, LDR. So we're going to take the LDR first and put one leg across to the other half of the breadboard, say in row 30. Then we're going to put this resistor into the G and D port. And also in the same leg as this LDR. So right now there's a current flowing through the LDR, through the resistor, into the ground. But there's something else interesting going on. This guy is conducting different amounts of current depending on whether we shade him or not. And because he's conducting different amounts of current, on whether or not we shade him or not, um, that's because his resistance changes. The voltage at this point here changes, depending on whether this guy's shaded or not, because voltage is just resistance times current. So if we were to put in a cable right into the same row, we could do it behind here or in here, right into the same row. Hmm, maybe I can, like, tuck him underneath so I don't want to shade him. Um... And then into an analog port, we're going to use A5. So right now, this analog port can read a, a different voltage every time we shade the um, LDR. And we're going to use this in our programming to create some circuits that respond to light. So, get onto the program. So, um, with this program, I'm just going to open up our last program, which was the button LED. This was it. Um, and I just figure we can recycle some of this code. So we're using two LEDs, which are in six and eight, so we can leave them in and get rid of the three and four. And there's going to be an if function that we're probably going to use. Okay. So this was the code. I mean, this would basically require some kind of delay here though. So this code here would turn on two LEDs when the button is pushed. And we're going to try to refurbish it to turn on some LEDs when the value of an LDR is at a certain level. So in order to do that, we're going to have to first set up a way to read from our program here the value of the LDR, which is in the Arduino. We're going to do that using a serial monitor which needs to be initialized and so that's done by saying serial dot begin 9600 9600 is the board rate the number of times it refreshes per second and 
What else are we going to have to do? Oh. We are reading an LDR from pin 5. So we're going to say LDR. And that was A5. Yeah, that was the end of the port. So LDR is going to be our input. So we've got LED1 in 6, LDR in A5. Now, before we actually worry about any if functions, I'm going to put this code on ice. Um, we're going to try to just have a printout of the reading of our LDR just to see that it is working. And so to do that, we're going to do the analog read function. And I'm just thinking um, to make things easier, we could set up a place to store the value of the LDR. I create an integer that's called LDR value. And we can say that it's zero for starters. I mean, the zero is irrelevant. We're going to have a value for it in, in a second. Um, so then we can assign a value to this LDR. LDR value. So this is an integer. This is where we store it. And we find it out by analog read, which is the same as digital read, except digital read is either high or low. Analog read is a value between 1 and 1024 LDR. So when we type in this line of code, the Arduino goes to pin A5, checks the voltage, and returns to us a value between 1 and 1024 to put it into this LDR value. And then we can print it out. We can say serial dot print line LDR value. So this prints it out and we can just have a, you know, do this every second. We can't have it done thousands of times a second, delay 1000. All right. So in theory, at least if it compiles, um, this code should give us some readings once we upload it. So we've clicked upload when that's done. We can, yep, nine. So if I reach out and shade it, we should have the value drop and we'll be interesting how much it drops. Eight, seven, 17. All right, if I had to completely shade it with my finger, 730, 730. So it goes from about 940 to 740. So that's about the 200 resolution between dark and light. And we're in an indoor room. I mean, it would it'd be different outdoors. So let's use what we figured out. So we have this LDR value now. This becomes something we're going to use in the if function. And I'm going to unfreeze this code here. Oh, come on. No, no. Can uncomment? Yay. All right. So the if function is going to look completely different. And we're going to just say L the uh, value is less than something. So it was. 740 to 940. I mean, halfway through there, like a small amount of shadow would then be like A40. So, yeah. I think the code I've got on the page right now would respond to shadows. So, let's have a test. And it should have a 100 millisecond response time. Yay! Not really under milliseconds. What's going on? Why does it take a second? Hmm. Maybe it's a serial print line. And we can make that one. So this should be virtually instantaneous now. When the shadow comes over the lights. Now I'm gonna upload. Come on. Ah, that's pretty nice. All right. So maybe we can throw in some variation here. 
maybe we can have two if functions. So one can say, one can be just a slight shadow. I mean, if the basic value is about 940, 900 would be a slight shadow. And the other one could be 760. So this is dark shadow. And maybe, hmm, maybe I can add, I don't know, like a buzzer on pin 10 and buzzer equals Uh, all right, so I can perhaps and maybe I can make that response a bit bigger. Um, we're gonna have to put the buzzer low as well. I'm gonna have to connect it in. So if I was to take another cable in there and put it into 10 and then connect the buzzer to it, I could probably throw in some nice variation. So do I need, can this guy connect across? No, he can't. Somewhat a Buzzers have something magnetic inside them, it appears. Um, I think he's an eight. All right. So if I upload this, uh, I didn't close that if statement. Okay, that works. Let's upload it. It's done. So a shadow will just trick trip our LEDs and it only has to be a small shadow. And if I create a big shadow, small shadow just trips the LEDs, a big shadow trips the LEDs and the buzzer. Now you can do a lot more with it. You could put four LEDs in. Um, if you check out the handout, I will uh, add another wrinkle to it, uh, a variable Sorry, a function called while one, which could completely shut down the program. And I really suggest that you play around with it. You've reached a milestone. Now you can use both inputs and outputs on the Arduino, and you can use both digital and analog inputs. So your turn to build it and have some fun.